specifically makeup and skincare, which are two of the worst offenders when it comes to finding toxic chemicals in products. They really are two of the worst offenders on the market today um, when you look at all personal care products together. So I love, you know, sort of simplifying and streamlining things for my clients and explain to you exactly what to use, what not to use, and why. Um, so before we kind of dive into just a few chemicals to avoid and why, I do want to say that we are offering samples of Crunchy. So if anyone is interested, we are happy to send out samples of this incredible, incredible skincare and makeup. And by the way, Annette, you look phenomenal. Oh, um, thank you. You look amazing. Um, and so it's just, it's something that you have to try for yourself. Um, and I highly recommend that um, everyone watching this um, reach out to, you know, myself or Net for samples because it truly is um, a revolutionary line in many, many ways. Not the least of it, which is how it's going to um, enhance your outer beauty and sort of boost your inner confidence as well. So many of us are aware um, of the fact that there are harmful chemicals in the food we eat. Annette, I know, has gone into that many times in great, great detail um, in all of her incredible, you know, education that she provides for us in her communities. Um, but did you know that many of those same chemicals are also in the personal care products and the makeup that we use as well? Um, and in fact, so it's not just, you know, we absorb from what we eat, right? But it's also that we can absorb up to 50% 50, 50 of those chemicals that we put on our skin. Your skin can absorb up to 50% of those chemicals um, into through the epidermis and right into the bloodstream. So 50% of what you're putting on your body gets absorbed. And in fact, absorption rate can be as high as 100% specifically on your scalp, armpits, and groin. So it's actually, you know, you really have to be mindful of not just what you're putting in your mouth, but also what you're putting on your skin. We all carry a body burden of chemicals, and the more we expose ourselves to, and the long-term exposure that we have, the higher that body burden becomes. Our liver, kidneys, and blood can only detoxify so many um, chemicals before it's just overburdened. So a little bit more information for you guys um, about uh, chemicals to avoid. The European Union forces companies to prove their chemicals are safe before they're allowed into commerce. But although the European Union has banned more than 1,300 harmful toxic chemicals in its personal care and cleaning products, the US FDA has only banned 30. Okay, only 30, 30 toxic chemicals. And the European Union bans 1,300. So we, all, all, we are already years behind where we should be, all right? Um, California is starting to get on board with like, you know, a couple of the propositions that they have put forward and passed, but truly the rest of the country is years and years and years behind where we should be in terms of preventing these harmful chemicals from getting into the personal care products and makeup and skincare that we use every day. Um, exposure to cosmetics comes in many forms. So for example, you're breathing in powder, you're swallowing bits of lipstick, which has lead. Most conventional lipsticks contain lead trace amounts, but think about it. Every time you apply lipstick, where does that lipstick go? You eat it, you eat the vast majority of it, right? Um, and you're applying it day after day after day and year after year after year. And that long-term exposure to that lead, even though it's trace amounts of lead, it's gonna build up, build up in your body. Um, so um, most likely you're absorbing cosmetic ingredients through the largest organ in your body, which is your skin. So you're applying you know, skincare to your face, you're applying foundation, you're applying makeup, it's absorbing into your skin. Um, studies have found that ingredients like parabens, which are synthetic preservatives, um, triclosan, which is a hand sanitizer, which I believe has actually been banned, and so it will not be allowed in that particular chemical, which is highly toxic um, and carcinogenic, is not going to be allowed in products, I think, after like 2020 or 21. So it is going to be phased out. It has been banned. But that's still two years, and it's still going to be appearing in the products that we're able to buy that are on the shelves. Right. Um, and PFAS is a huge one. So PFAS, um, I forget the actual long name of it, but it's the ingredient found in Teflon, which makes Teflon so toxic, why you're not supposed to cook with Teflon. So that's one of the top three things that you need to avoid. You should not ever, ever, ever cook with Teflon because of the PFAS found that lines the Teflon cookware. Okay. So cook with stainless steel, cook with cast iron, cook with ceramic. You know, you can, I use, I have glass pots I use. Just don't cook with Teflon. Throw it out. Um, wow. So yep. that's a big thing for Christmas because a lot of times, like I remember when I was young, my family a lot of times would give me things for Christmas, Christmas that I needed, you know, like skillets or mm -hmm. things. 
And what do you do when your family has a young person that's gone off to college or something like that? You give them all of your old pots and pans that you no longer use. Absolutely. So, so you want to, you just actually want to avoid all of it. And so yeah. like, for example, like we got lots of pots and pans when we got married 24 years ago and we have since, you know, we had to say goodbye to them. We ditched them and we did not give them away. We threw them away. We landfilled them because nobody, especially the worst part is Teflon when it wears over time, then it just releases more of that PFAS chemical, that highly toxic chemical. And then it's in your food. It's leached into your food and you're eating it. Okay. So um, avoiding Teflon pans is my one of the top three that I suggest. Um, so, so it's just it's amazing where all these chemicals come from and how they're absorbed into your body, the ways they're conveyed into your body. Um, let's see. So I also want to talk about so many of these chemicals disrupt hormones, and those types of chemicals are linked to harm at very small amounts. And it's similar. Think of it as um, one drop in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Okay. It seems like it's nothing. It's a tiny, tiny amount. But what happens is hormone disrupting chemicals are not tested at low levels. So the FDA tests the chemicals at high levels and assumes what will happen at low levels without ever actually performing the studies. But genes switch on and off at different parts of the dose response curves. So the effects are not possible to predict, right? So it's like a big experiment. Since we don't know, we can't assume that it's safe at any level. It's safe at low levels. It's actually not because these genes can be switched on and off at low doses, not just high doses, at low doses, it's been shown in the lab. Um, so in fact, the American Academy of Pediatrics has been lobbying Congress, Congress and federal agencies for years about hormone disrupting chemicals and their impact on public health. Saying the levels are too low to do any harm is absolutely wrong and you cannot assume that because the studies haven't been done. So basically we're being treated as lab rats and we're being exposed to these low dose chemicals for years and years and years at a time and then all of a sudden everyone's shocked at the high rates of cancer and you know endocrine disruption that they're seeing in people and even in teenage girls. Um, and it's actually should not be shocking at all. It's because of the chemicals that we're being exposed to. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of the worst offenders. So problematic ingredients typically fall into three categories. You have endocrine disruptors, carcinogens, which of course are um, cancer causing ingredients. And the third category, not to be dismissed, irritants and allergens. Okay, so those are the three categories we're gonna talk about. So problematic endocrine disruptors inside cosmetics. These are chemical substances and compounds that can imitate our body's natural hormones, thus interfering with our body's normal natural chemical signaling. So and our endocrine system, as we know, controls our hormones. It controls every other system in our body. And when you mess with your hor hormone um, balance, your hormone system, you throw your entire body out of equilib equilibrium, out of balance, and that you're like setting the stage to eventually lead to disease and disorders in, um, developing within your body. It is incredibly important to keep your body in equilibrium in terms of hormones. And that's why we work so hard to balance our hormones. That's why, you know, we follow the keto diet. That's why we do what we do. But, you know, if it's if you're eating the right way and you're following the keto plan, but you're not avoiding these harmful chemicals, you know, you're setting yourself back. OK, you're 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 right. setting, you're setting your health back further. So you're sending mixed signals to your endocrine system. Literally, <laughs> literally, your endocrine system is just getting confused and overwhelmed. Right. Um, so looking at the ingredients on the label, this is just an example of these these endocrine disruptors that you want to avoid at all costs. So triclosan, toluene, resorcinol, which is actually found in hair dye, um, petroleum distillates, butylated hydro hydroxy anisole, BHA, also BHT, um, phthalates, which are synthetic preservatives, parabens, also synthetic preservatives, and phenoxyethanol. Okay. So while many of these studies, um, let's see. Okay. So just to talk about phthalates and parabens. Phthalates are linked to breast cancer and are endocrine disruptors. And they're found in all kinds of makeup, skincare, nail polish, synthetic fragrances. Um, and they're a reproductive and developmental toxin. Okay. Another synthetic preservative are parabens. It's a class of preservative called parabens. These are linked also to breast cancer and endocrine disruptors. They're found in creams and lotions and many different lines of makeup, okay? So when you start looking at your ingredient labels, you're gonna start noticing, okay, I see this is a paraben, you know, ethyl paraben, methyl paraben. You're gonna start reading the label. Hopefully you're gonna start looking at the ingredients and saying, oh, I really shouldn't be using this. There's these phthalates, dibutyl phthalate, methyl paraben. You know, there's enough ingredients in here 
that I need to avoid that I should not be using this product, okay? Um, another example is actually retinol, vitamin A. Um, overexposure to this naturally occurring substance can have reproductive and developmental effects and has been linked to skin tumors and lesions actually found in foundation, lipstick, moisturizers, cleansers, anti-aging products, um, as well as foods rich in this vitamin. Your exposure can actually be very high without you even realizing it. And the exposure is amplified. Let's say you're eating a lot of foods with vitamin A and then you're using a lot of products with vitamin A, you know, you're over exposing yourself to um, this particular chemical. Even though right. it's not occurring, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you to get the high, high doses. Right. Well, and vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin that your body needs to convert from beta carotene in the amounts that your body needs. So by slathering it all over your face, because it actually, it's used more as um, almost like a, a peel. It peels your face. And by using that on a regular basis, your skin is absorbing that and you're getting more vitamin A than your body might need, therefore overexposing yourself to that. Exactly. And people don't take in, that into account, you know, when they're getting vitamin A naturally in their food, they may be taking a supplement that also has vitamin A, and then they're also applying it all over their face. Um, it's all adding up. So um, octinoxate is another um, endocrine disruptor, and this is a chemical found in foundations and sunscreens, and it's linked to endocrine disruption and thyroid disorders. So um, the second class of chemical I wanna talk about is a problematic, car problematic carcinogens inside cosmetics. So again, these are compounds, substances, and chemicals that may lead to cancer. And when you're looking at the ingredients on your labels and your personal care products, your makeup, and your skincare, um, you want to look for ingredients like SLS, sodium lauryl sulfate. Okay, that's a, that's, um, a sudsing agent. Um, PEGs, polyethylene glycol compounds, and chemicals ending in F, like satirith. These are all potentially contaminated with 1,4-dioxane. Now, Annette, we talked about this briefly yesterday. Um, and I'm going to go into 1,4-dioxane in a little bit more detail a little bit later on. Um, but so, for example, methyl, propyl, caprylic, and propylene glycol and mineral oil are all ingredients that you want to avoid in your products. And those are actually petroleum distillates. So, and I, I have to apologize. I, I nerd out a little bit. I know Annette will appreciate this. Um, I do want to dive a little bit into a couple of the chemicals to avoid here. Um, so formaldehyde, quaternium-15, so quats. Okay, this is another one. This is a biggie to avoid. When you see quaternium um, in your ingredient label, put that product down, walk away. Don't buy it, don't use it, okay? Quaternium-15 and other formaldehyde-releasing preservatives. It's a potential carcinogen labeled by the National Cancer Institute, okay? Its use and exposure has absolutely been linked to cancer formation in both animals and in humans. Formaldehyde ranks among the top 10 most common contact allergens as well, as well in addition to being um, a carcinogen. So look for DMDM, hydantoin, butylated hydroxytoluene, bronopol, diazolidinol, urea, a um, bunch more that I actually can't pronounce, <laughs> and then quats. <laughs> <laughs> quaternium 15, quaternium 18, and quaternium 26. So any quaternium with any number following it, put the product down, don't purchase it. It's not worth it, okay? Um, and then we also talked about petroleum-based products that you want to avoid. So propylene glycol and any of the methyl, propyl, caprylic um, mineral oil products. Um, petroleum jelly comes from residue that builds up outside of oil rigs. It's collected, distilled, and refined, and then used in many cosmetics such as lip gloss. You want to avoid this. <laughs> avoid, just avoid, okay? The chance of contamination and trace, you know, um, ingredients still being in there is very high and it's just not worth the risk. A third compound to avoid is PEGs, polyethylene glycols. And these are petroleum-based products that are used to thicken and soften cosmetics. So they're thickening and softening agents. They're common in cream-based products, of course, like lotions and, you know, face creams. Um, and they're problematic because they're often contaminated with ethylene oxide and 1,4-dioxane. So now let's talk about 1,4-dioxane and talk about why it's actually so bad for you to be, to be exposed to. This is a carcinogen that's linked to organ toxicity. It's found in as many as 22% of the more than 25,000 cosmetic products in the Skin Deep database. Now, Skin Deep database is part of the EWG, the Environmental Working Group. It's an awesome clearinghouse of information you can type in the name of any product, personal care product, makeup, skincare, cleaning agent, like whatever you have, and chances are um, it's gonna come up in the Skin Deep database and you're gonna be able to see um, 
the EWG or Environmental Working Group has given it a rating from one to nine, one being the best, safe to use, nine being toxic, avoid, okay? Incredible, incredible resource for you to use when researching um, safe products, the EWG, Environmental Working Group. Um, so one for dioxane is found in as many as 22% of those products listed, okay? And this is a contaminant that's actually created after the fact. So when common ingredients in a product react to form a compound when mixed together, okay? So this compound is, um, so products that create suds, such as shampoo, liquid soap, bubble bath, hair relaxers, all those things you're gonna find one form of in. You're also gonna find in other products, such as makeup and skincare, okay? So what to look for on the label, um, ingredients that can cause one formation of one form of sodium lauryl sulfate or SLS, PEG, polyethylene glycol compounds, chemicals that include the clauses xenol, cetera, and OLEF. So those ETH, those compounds ending in F or ETH are also red flags. So 1,4-dioxane, and stick with me here, um, we're almost done with the chemical part. 1,4-dioxane um, is generated through a process called ethoxylation. This is important because ethylene oxide, a known breast carcinogen, is added to other chemicals to make them less harsh, okay? So they're cutting down the harsh. So a lot of times these chemicals are used to temper other chemicals, but it actually makes the product even worse. And it forms even worse compounds because this initial um, chemical is added to the formulation. So they're solving one problem and creating 10 more. It's really awful. And wow. it's all the name, and they do this to, to mask unpleasant smells. So don't even get me started on the synthetic fragrance added to other products that are, we are sold, okay, that are sold to us. Right, uh, but it's like fabric softeners and like all exactly, of it. Exactly, so it's used to mask those scents, you know, it's used to make a product look palatable or, or look better, or, you know, there's a million different reasons to make it feel, it's all the, to make it feel better, but in the, what the end result is, companies are not required to list 1,4-dioxane or these ethoxylated agents um, on the ingredient label because it forms, and they know it forms after the fact, but it forms after the products are compounded together. So they don't have to list on the label, um, but that chemical is absolutely in there and it's very dangerous to be exposed to long-term. So what does this mean for us? Um, the, what it means is um, it is a cancer concern and specifically for vulnerable populations such as pregnant women, infants, and teenagers, right? And um, it has been regulated, it's been banned and found to be unsafe for use in cosmetics in Canada and the EU, but of course in the US, you know, all these cosmetics companies are using it, okay? So how do we avoid it? The FDA does not require 1,4-dioxane to be listed as an ingredient on product labels because the chemicals are contaminant produced during manufacturing. Without labeling, there's absolutely no way to know for certain whether 1,4-dioxane is included in that product or not. It makes it very difficult for consumers to actually avoid it. Alternative processes to ethoxylation exist, but companies do not use them. They just go ahead and allow that compound to form. Um, so certain companies are being pressured now to re remove it from their product line. Some are, some are not. Um, some are agreeing to, like Johnson Johnson has eventually agreed to. It's going to take a couple of years to phase that chemical out. So the the, pr the process is very slow. Okay. So um, talc is another one to avoid. Titanium dioxide, one through butadiene, um, BHT, butylated hydroxytoluene, which is found in many, many, many processed foods as well. You absolutely want to avoid BHT another synthetic preservative, absolutely linked to cancer. Carbon black is a big no-no. This ingredient is found in most mascaras and eyeliners. It's linked to cancer and organ toxicity. So think about it. You're lining your eyes with this. You're applying mascara. Who hasn't had gotten mascara in their eyes all the time, right? Oh, all the time. Every day. Every day. Um, but now, if you're using conventional mascaras in the marketplace, you are that carbon black is being absorbed okay, into your eyes. Um, and this is a cancer. It's a carcinogenic carcinogenic chemical. Um, it, it goes under many names, Aero, Aerovel, Aerogen, Channel Black, Pivot Black 6, Pivot Black 7, um, Atlantic, Black Pearls. Like it, it, that's the thing. There's all these synonyms for the chemicals, so you never quite know what you're using. But I'm here to tell you that you want to avoid carbon black. The third and final class of chemicals to avoid are problematic irritants and allergens inside cosmetics. So basically, whenever you have like a bad reaction to a product that you put on your skin, like you're you know, itching terribly, rash, you know, your face is red, um, you are reacting to, now again, you can, you can be allergic to lavender and react to lavender in a product, and that's a natural ingredient. Absolutely. But for the most part, right. But for the most part, you know, when you're reacting to something, you're reacting to the irritant or the allergen found in that cosmetic. 
So this is one of the biggest offenders, MI, and I'm gonna try and say this, methyl isothiazolinone. Yes, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> it's my, it's my bio, my bio background coming in handy. Um, so MI, and uh, there's a couple other, and fragrance, petroleum distillers, and formaldehyde. Um, these are all co terrible causes of contact dermatitis, which is a nasty, painful, sort of poison ivy type rash that can become chronic with expedited ex repeated exposure. It's so common that it's been named the allergen of the year by the Al American Contact Dermatitis Society. Due to the prevalence of contact dermatitis experience when used when using many commonly used products. And this is actually very often seen in babies and toddlers. And it can be because of the diapers that they you know, have to wear. Um, and it can be just because of the um, detergents used that are then, you know, that the, there are then, you know, the clothing is on their skin, they're exposed to it, and they develop this awful dermatitis that won't go away. Um, bismuth oxychloride. It's a very, very irritating agent, very often found in makeup. And you actually like you buff your skin in, you know, you buff it into your skin and even the action of buffing can actually irritate your skin even further. Um, so this is a chemical absolutely to avoid. And um, I want to actually talk before I get to, well, I can talk about, I'll talk about heavy metals and I'll talk about obesogens because that's kind of cool. And that relates really directly to, you know, more of what Annette, Annette's purview. And that's what we kind of talked about yesterday. Yeah. Um, let me know if I'm overloading with information or is this good so far? Well, all of those names are definitely a chemical like overload, but I did create a PDF file that if you just comment chemical, I'll send you a link to the PDF file so that you can get more information about a lot of those chemicals. I mean, not every single one of them be on there. You'll get the, the idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So don't be like, uh, intimidated or overwhelmed by all the chemical names being thrown around. Basically what you need to know is there are harsh, harmful chemicals in many of the makeup and skincare lines out there. And luckily we offer a solution, which is crunchy, beautiful, toxin free, absolutely free of all harmful chemicals, makeup and skincare that you can feel confident and comfortable using that Annette endorses, that I endorse and love. And I tried everything out there. Um, and I feel confident in the knowledge that this is the safe, these are the safest products on the market. Um, they all rate a one on the EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group Scale. So if you go into EWG and type in any of Crunchy's products individually, um, they're all going to rate a one, which is phenomenal across the board. And that is really incredible. Um, our line does also heavy metals testing, which most other makeup and skincare companies absolutely do not do. So we test for the presence of heavy metals. And what we've discovered is that um, we've tested of the products we've tested so far on the line, all the products are coming back with undetectable levels of metal. Okay. Like undetectable, which is also unheard of in the industry. Right. You no know, levels are accepted in other product lines. Ours is undetectable. Okay. Um, we use EcoCert certified minerals to pigment the foundation, to pigment all the, you know, the makeup. Which means, so EcoCert certified is truly the highest level of certification you can have for mineral pigments for the makeup. Um, and again, it follows the European Union standards for safety and purity and efficacy. Um, and I, let's see. Okay, so in 2013, University of California researchers found chromium, cadmium, aluminum, manganese, and lead in all 24 lip glosses and lipsticks that they tested, different brands. Most of the tested lip products contain high concentrations of titanium and aluminum, which um, tend to bioaccumulate in organs and are a big no-no. Um, all examined products had detectable manganese. The biggest culprit was lead detected in 24 products. With an average, I'm not going to go to parts per million, but basically there's lead in lipstick and you're eating it and it's bioaccumulating in your organs. So what you want to do is seek out a safer product line like Crunchy when you want to wear makeup. Um, so several brands of mineral makeup, oh, all right. we talked about EcoCert certified minerals, highest certification possible, meets or exceeds EU standards for safety and purity. Um, yep, third party testing. So we do third party testing and that reveals undetectable lead levels other, um, head and other heavy metal levels. So no lead, no other, no heavy metals detected. Um, and we also do third party testing, which I think is really important because yeah. it also distinguishes Crunchy from any other makeup and skincare line out there most of them really don't do third-party testing. They just sort of rely on self-reporting and Crunchy feels that that's just not good enough. Um, the third-party testing is required to ensure the standards of purity um, that we have set forth. 
The really nice thing is um, you can go on my website. You can go on um, Annette's website. You can see we have a blacklist of ingredients to avoid. Um, so in addition to Annette's helpful PDF, um, there's all 1,300 harmful toxic chemicals that Crunchy avoids are listed um, on that blacklist of ingredients. You can go in, you can click on the particular ingredient, see why we avoid it. It'll give an explanation of the ingredient, why it's avoided, and even um, research articles are linked underneath if you want to look into that particular ingredient more. So we've tried to be as comprehensive as, as possible when we cover like why we avoid certain chemicals. Um, so let's see. Oh, I want to talk about the obesogens real quick. Okay, so this I found fascinating and horrifying all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're trying to kill us. The government's trying to kill us. Um, artificial chemicals will make you fat. Okay, so what they discovered, what researchers have recently discovered, and there are five particular classes of chemicals. I'm going to just go over a couple. Um, but basically, it's bisphenol A, BPA, which you've all heard of, right? It's that chemical in plastic, why we want to avoid storing and cooking food in plastic. Phthalates, that's synthetic preservative. Um, atrazine, and, or herbicide. Um, Perfluorooctanoic acid, PFOA. Again, that's the PFAS or the PFOA. That's the chemical found in Teflon, right? Um, and basically, those, they're called obesogens. When those chemicals enter your body, they interrupt your endocrine functioning and they promote fat gain. It's like this cruel joke. It's yet another way that these awful chemicals, these synthetic chemicals are adding to your weight gain, okay? So what do you wanna do? You wanna avoid these chemicals altogether, okay? Avoid BPA. Do not store your food in plastic. Do not cook your food in plastic. Very simple, glass. Glass is the answer to everything, okay? Glass and silicone. Um, so everything should be, and if you're gonna use plastic, search out BPA free. The problem they're finding now is that the BPA alternatives um, are also questionable. Um, they may actually leach into they may actually leach into your food as well, and maybe just as harmful. So it's best to choose opt for glass. Um, phthalates, remember that since that is a synthetic preservative, you want to avoid phthalates as much as possible because that can actually lead to exposure to phthalates can lead to weight gain as well. So look for um, phthalates in your ingredient labels, and if you see that, put that product back down and opt for something without phthalates. Um, and we are seeing more and more products now, you know, with make created without some of these ingredients because manufacturers are recognizing that they are in fact harmful to us. Um, let's see. Okay, those, oh, and then of course, no Teflon. <laughs> Don't cook with Teflon. Right. So that I thought was really interesting, the obesogens and what they're finding about them. Um, and again, it all goes back to, it's so, it makes so much sense. You know, you wanna eat the right foods, right? You wanna follow the keto plan. Um, but you also don't want to sabotage all the effort you're putting into following that eating plan by exposing yourself to these harmful toxic chemicals, whether it be through your skin um, or again, in other ways, like the chemicals leaching into your food and then you're eating that food. So that's right. Well, and heavy metals, most of them cross the blood brain barrier and aluminum is one of those heavy metals that's been linked to, um, Alzheimer's and dementia. So along with avoiding sugar, you also want to avoid heavy metals and heavy metals cause so many problems in the body and a lot of other places too. They can cause severe health issues and a lot of other things. And we don't have time on this video to even go down that road, but that's another video, right? <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, these things are all well researched and they're well known and if you just comment chemicals in the comments, my bot will send you a PDF file and you can do your own research if you like on the chemicals. But we are, our reason for sharing this information with you is just to educate you and give you the ability to think about what you're putting, not only in your mouth, but on your skin and being healthy and being at a healthy weight and, I mean, if you're taking the time and the effort to follow a special diet, like a keto diet or a paleo diet or a Mediterranean diet, and if you're spending money to do things like drinking ketones or taking specific supplements to help support that lifestyle, but then you're still slathering all of the chemicals on your skin, you could be negating some of the things that you're trying to do to be more healthy. So that's like the whole 
the whole purpose of this video is to just educate people on what's out there and to let you know that there are options. Absolutely. And I encourage each and every one of you to, you know, reach out to us for to try Crunchy and ask questions and, you know, look at your products, like, you know, look at the Crunchy Blacklist and then compare it to the ingredient list, you know, in the products that you have, the makeup and skincare for scope products. And you might be really shocked and possibly dismayed at <laughs> the chemicals that you're seeing in there. Um, and, you know, it's, I can feel a little overwhelming, like, gosh, where do I begin? I have so many things maybe I want to switch out, but um, Annette and I are happy to help you with that. So absolutely. That. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I've been using the same shampoo forever and I never even read the label because I've been doing it for such a long time and I've been dealing with the scalp psoriasis and eczema for a while. And uh, Lisa had mentioned on a video that she was doing not too long ago, a different brand of shampoo to try. And I just happened to be at TJ Maxx and they had some on the shelf. And I was like, oh, I'm going to try that. Lisa said it was good. And I immediately could tell that it didn't have parabens in it because my skin was like so much better. So here I am reading the label of the stuff that I was using going, how did I not notice this? How did I not realize that I was using that? And Golly, who knows? Maybe that's the reason I have so many problems with my scalp. Is this just the shampoo I was using? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who knows? It's, but it's yeah, it's, it's and like, one I, thing I could avoid that I wasn't really paying attention to before. Absolutely. And so even just switching out one product can make a huge difference. And that's something that I've been very cognizant of. And so I have scalp psoriasis. My daughter has scalp psoriasis. We control it using natural um, shampoos. And, you know, we don't have to use any medicine, any harsh medicines, but we control it just strictly by avoiding SLS and parabens and fragrance and all the other stuff and MI and all those other um, harmful toxic ingredients that can really get in there and irritate our scalp. So, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. It it's crazy how much stuff is just out there. <laughs> it is. Um, so Annette, thank you so much for having me on. I truly appreciate your making the time so I could share with your wonderful group. I appreciate you as well. And I think that a lot of people are going to be shocked to find out what they have in their house that's uh, probably needs to be tossed out. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually have, um, I have a huge a uh, toxin-free master list of all the products I recommend that I'm happy to share with Annette that she can share with this group if she so chooses. Oh, cool. That'd be great. Yep. And I, it's something that I've compiled over the past few years and I highly recommend all of the products and it's all like broken out by category. And I highly recommend all the products um, in the list because they work and they're toxin-free. Oh, I would love to have that. Even if it's just for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be happy to provide that to you. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Well, um, again, this is my friend, Lisa Davis, not Davia. <laughs> um, and uh, we work together to help people like, be better educated about what they're putting on their body, in their body, and how you can have a more toxin-free life. So um, everybody needs to be more concerned about toxins. It's just... Absolutely. And you know what? It's an easy switch to make. Once you know what to use and you switch, it is an easy switch to make and you'll never look back. Yeah. And we have samples. If you're interested in learning more about something, you know, we can provide samples or whatever you need to get you more information to help you um, live a healthier life. Yep. Awesome. Well, thanks, Lisa. Have you very welcome, great Annette. weekend. And if I don't talk to you before Christmas, have a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, my friend. Take care. Bye. Bye, everyone.